cats are around, is like, hey, creepy refrigerator woman. Uh, like, <laughs> best moment of ever, like, it does, it's amazing, it's great, it's the best jump scare ever. Eat your heart out, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, <laughs> Broadway. <laughs> Welcome to the Gray House Talkback, everyone. Hi. Uh, for, those, for those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Matt Pat. I'm an online content creator who specializes in solving the lore of deeply mysterious things that are usually dark and scary and often involve dead children. In creepy cabins, yes, uh, which, you know, might explain why I'm here talking about the show today, right? <laughs> Whoa, how'd that happen? Um, so, how many of you enjoyed the show? Great. How many of you have questions about the show? <laughs> Great, yep, that is totally to be expected. So, um, one thing that has been so wonderful about art in general, but also uh, specifically about Grey House as a production, is just the amount of conversation that it spawns, right? It is not a show that is razzle-dazzle, you know, you know who the good guys and bad guys of Greece are when you walk out the door, right? This is a show that prompts discussion, it is a show that prompts questioning, and, and actual like analysis of what you just watched. Um, oh, me, yes, sorry, hello. The stage manager. Hello. They, you want me to leave the stage, yes. Well, it's been fun, thank you all for your time, great. I'm leaving you with all the questions, bye. I'll be back, be right <laughs> sure. I'll be back, apparently. I get lights now, wow. Hello, bro. No, we already did that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> They're like, they don't want to knock me off the stage. I appreciate that. Let's hear it for the stage crew. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Hard at work. Awesome job, guys. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, the, the great thing about art and theater and everything is the discussions that it prompts, right? And this show is an embodiment of it. And one of the things that the whole creative team back here has, has noticed after every show are the amount of conversations that are happening out front of this theater, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour afterward. People going to juniors for their slice of cheesecake and talking about, like, hey, that old woman, what was she doing on stage? Like, <laughs> WTF was that all about? Uh, how does he drink so much moonshine? Uh, things like that. And so what the production team has wanted to do as a part of this production is once a week have a talk back like this with the audience to just act as an open forum of discussion for your theories. <laughs> I said the word. <laughs> your theater theories. Uh, about everything that happened in the show, right? So that way we have an open forum. And, and much to uh, this team's credit, they've also launched subreddits. They've launched a lot of these things so that way online audiences can start to have these discussions in forums. But what better way to do it than live on stage with all of you present in the room freshly off of seeing the show, right? So that is the plan that we have today. I am literally here to quiz you on the show. <laughs> No joke, I found this out yesterday. Uh, I, I'm like, oh, I'm having a talk back with the playwright, and he's going to explain everything to us, and it's going to be great. No, the pressure's on you, friends. Uh, so, so I hope you're all paying attention. I hope you're all taking notes. And now it's time to theorize. Um, so without any further ado, uh, we have uh, microphones that are going to be circulating across. Yes, down here. Are you, are you prepared? to? Do we have people upstairs, too, to run all the way to the balcony? No, but I am prepared to run up those stairs. OK. <laughs> we, we were touring the theater the other day. I ran up. That, that's a lot of stairs. You know what? I'm going to get those steps in and get those fans up. Cool. <laughs> nice. Or you could just shout, you know, project from the diaphragm. It is the theater, after all. 
Uh, so I, I think of the best place to start, honestly, with this show is with the title, honestly. So uh, I think at this point, we're all generally aware that, hey, the, this couple crashes in the middle of a winter storm. They wind up in this house where some, if not all, the residents are ghosts or dead or something. Um, you know, there is some sort of weird connection between Raleigh and Max where one is a mother, but Sometimes, but not really, and she's being kind of ousted by the house, and now Max is coming in to, til to fill that role, right? That's, we all got the gist of that, roughly, <laughs> and that you have a bunch of girls here, and, and one was shot during uh, World War II, and, and one was, you know, had, had you know, things happen with them with a not-so-friendly parent relationship and things like that. Like, we all picked up the not-so-subtle hints there, yes? Great, good. So we're all working off the same page. Let's get into the deep stuff now. Let's get into the hard, like, theorizing 301 here. Uh, so Gray House. Anyone have any thoughts on, like, why this is the Gray House? Why is this the title of the play? Yes. You in the front. Oh. It, it, is, it is literally gray. Good. Yes. Very literal interpretation. Fantastic. I love it. Oh, we have, a, we have a comment back here. Um, I think it's about like how we can do good things and bad things in our life, and all of our lives are in like shades of gray, Ooh. and all of the characters that have been here, with the exception of the children, really like thrive in that area where you don't know who is a good guy or who is a bad guy. That's great, yeah. So it is this level of like, there is no black and white here. It's a little mix of both. That's fantastic, I love that. Uh, I, I see her sprinting around over to this side. Perfect, down here in the plaid. Nope, right over there. Um, I sort of agree with that and also bounce off of it a bit in, I don't know what that's <laughs> It's okay, I'll, I'll reiterate everything you said. There we go. Um, reiterate and bounce off of that in, I also don't know if the children, I think the children are also in that shade of gray because we don't necessarily know if their intentions are pure negative, if it's purely innocent or if it's, they're working for something more maleficent. And, and also, are they just being selfish and looking out for themselves, or they're looking out for the family? Mm -hmm. And they're also in that gray zone as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, yeah, it, you don't know if they are malevolent spirits, if they are working for, for good or bad, or, you know, what, what is their intention as spiritual entities? Yes, in the front. Uh, yeah, I was saying that uh, it also might just be, like, because the house is sort of like a purgatory, uh, obviously, like... Uh, squirrel was at some point in a black dress and as she is passing over she's in a white dress and also we have i already forgot her name but the, the sassy one the, the, the marlo the the yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. who was saying that she's been here for a while so it might just be gray because like this is the purgatory house where you stay before you go and pass on yeah no that and that's honestly like my i would say my personal interpretation with this is the idea of this being a, a purgatory, right? This is a kind of like a way station into whatever is beyond, right? And so that idea of existing in this, this middle space, this like subspace in a lot of ways, uh, that is what makes it gray to me. One more, and then we'll keep talking. Uh, what? <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, in fact, yeah. <laughs> it's a very different show. Very different show. Not family friendly in a lot of different ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, for those of you who didn't hear, I thought, great job projecting, by the way. Awesome. <laughs> Let's hear it for Broadway acoustics. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, in, ca in case you couldn't make it out, you know, uh, we, when we decompose, we turn gray. You know, everyone at some point in their, in their life to death process, in their, in their decaying process, turns to gray. So this is a house of gray in a lot of ways. Last one on the gray topic. Um, one of the things I've kind of noticed is in a lot of, like the previous caretaker had a similar experience of crashing during a snowstorm, seeing the house through the storm, which the snowstorm would desaturate colors, and at night, you don't see color. So the house would appear gray from the outside, not that we see the outside from us. Sure, no, that's awesome, <laughs> great, awesome. So, so I think we got a lot of good explanations for the gray stuff. Going, the gray stuff, it's delicious. Um, <laughs> 
Now, uh, kind of transitioning to a different thing that all of you are holding in your hands, which is, is the O in the middle of Grey House, right? All the marketing. And I haven't gotten to talk to the marketing team about, like, you know, I'm just the guy who's talking about the theories. Uh, you know, so we're solving this together. Is there's a red O in all the marketing around this. And this has been a very important part of kind of, like, all the advertisements for this show. But, you know, not a whole lot of red O's on here. So just like with Grey House, what is your interpretation? Like, what is that symbolic of? Let's go, if you feel like you can project there up in the top. Great, I, I can hear you, so you're good. Can we, just, can we just take a minute to appreciate the start of the sentence that just happened here? When you stab someone... <laughs> yeah, sure, when you make an incision, when you stab, no, you're fine. When you stab... I just love the conversations that I find myself in sometimes, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So basically between, between the blood, the passion, the, the actual violence that's happening there, all of that is encapsulated in, in this red wound in a lot of ways. Uh, I yes, came, we got someone I in, came in to the, the mezzanine, please. Yes, to the mezzanine. Yes, hey. <laughs> Good Hi. to see you again. Hi. Hello. Uh, so I kind of, throughout the play, saw it in two different ways. So first, O being like a hole, a portal, and obviously the downstairs, wherever they're going to, the basement of hell, um, was more the O is highlighting the portal aspect, but then the red, obviously the red and the fabric she was working with, the red entrails, and then tying it together, I thought of the red string of fate mm -hmm. and how she kind of kept weaving, because at one point, Squirrel had the cat's cradle that yep. I noticed her playing with in the portal, and it just kind of felt like they were, once you finally learn where that entrail is coming from, mm -hmm. That's what I thought the red kind of meant, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah, we weaving a, a sense of fate and all that, and also literal portals that may, may or may not exist in the basement. Absolutely, 100%. Hi. Um, hi there. Hi. Uh, so I thought that since a lot of the colors um, on the set are very muted, it's very like brown, neutrals, things like that, and th it makes blood pop. And I think in the series, in the... In the times where it seemed like the guy, forgot his name, um, was like... Hank? Hank Henry? Oh, Henry. Uh. Both are acceptable. <laughs> so, Hankry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hankry, he's like having fun dancing with like the old woman, whatever. But it, I think the blood that was dripping, that has to have symbolic meaning for a deeper level within the house because she came out in one of the most important parts, I think, where, where it was like the exchange of the old caretaker to the new one, but she, she never had anything other than stuff with Hankry. So I think that means that, <laughs> yes, it's canon. I was gonna say, this is, this is now the canon name, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I think it makes us wonder what is her uh, full extent of significance. She must have something else, especially if like blood and the the O and everything. Yeah, absolutely. The um, one thing I was gonna say is it, it might not be a canon name, but it is now my ship name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shipping the same guy with himself, though, unless it's a past version of himself. Anyway, we'll, we'll get there. Yes, right in the middle. Uh, yeah, I think the other thing that a red O brings to mind is at the climax, uh, he gets his leg skinned. Uh, and which literally creates a red O of skin that's dragged back across him, um, which I thought was reminiscent of uh, like the the truth or dare kind of style game, uh, Show or Hell, uh, is all about kind of all these things that you're hiding from yourself, these traumas inside, and then at the end they all get peeled back up, and it's sort of the the truth that's underneath that's a bit bloodier and that's been concealed this whole time. 
uh, underneath everything. That's awesome. Uh, one, I'm going to toss this one out, uh, and I, I see a lot of people wanting to do this, so let's do like maybe one or two more. Uh, I, I'd love anyone's approval of my theory, uh, which is, which is that you know, with uh, Hank Hangry, uh, Hankry, uh, we <laughs> ship name Cannon. Uh, we see in him, right, uh, a cycle of violence, right? We see him representing these men who are repeatedly coming in and uh, being violent and abusive to the various women that we see across the, the stage, right? Hurting them, murdering them, taking advantage of them, et cetera. And so to me, a red circle in a lot of ways is a, is a cycle of violence, right? Red is violence and then the circle that continues over and over. Yeah, I'm getting some snaps, getting some snaps from the balcony. That corner of the balcony gets it, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, to me, that's what that represents. Let's grab uh, one or two more, and then we gotta, we gotta talk about some of these other characters, right? Uh, yeah, first, Same. hi, Same. I'm glad Absolutely. I'm not the only one that watched the play and was left kind of wondering about some things. But um, I guess the O is, you pretty much nailed it, which was, to me, yeah, you got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Yeah, I that, see you. that's exactly what I was going to say is the actual shape of the letter. It's, there's something very cyclical about the play and how people come and go and you continue that cycle. And then, you know, the red, there's a lot associated with that color. It could be blood, it could be anything, but it stands out against the actual poster. So it draws attention to the shape of the letter. For me personally, that's kind of how I took it. Awesome. And uh, last one, one I, haven't talked, I haven't talked down here. Oh, oh wait, what? Is it a fixed point? Don't worry, I, I appreciate your Toon Squad jersey, though. Awesome. It's in my Groundhog Day, but instead of a day, it's really more of a, of a cycle of Max that's always going to be the mother, and Henry slash Hank will be, um, so we know that all the girls were, you know, taken advantage of, killed by, you know, uh, male triggers, right? So yep. what, um, how I see it is, Absolutely, and, and the mother goes by a lot of different names, right? It's, sometimes we call her Raleigh, but sometimes we call her a lot of other things, right? Um, okay, let's, let's put a wrap on that because we actually got to talk about the events of the play and not just the marketing of the play, you know, not just the stuff that's on, on, on the cover there. Uh, one thing I, I wanted to know, and, and you kind of brought it up in the mezzanine, which is, hey, there's a portal to hell in the basement. <laughs> or is there? <laughs> So one of the things I'd love to question you guys about and get your theories on, your hypotheses about, is what is the basement, what is the front door, and what is the stairs, right? So we see Squirrel after the kind of ceremony that you see, the weird BDSM ceremony where we're like extracting his like moonshine or whatever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, after all of that, we, we see Squirrel exit down into the basement, right? This is kind of her home base throughout the whole thing. You see Raleigh at the very end of the play leave and uh, Max also almost leaving through this door where she sees the, the deer. And then up at the top, we have, uh, you know, we have the ancient one, the, the old woman right, who ascends upwards while Squirrel is going downwards, right? So any thoughts on the, this, this is the hard one. This is, we're getting to the hard territory now. We warmed up on the marketing business. Uh, you there in the, in the front. You're very excited. I drew this for you. I'm not, Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Say hi to me afterward. We'll be hanging out. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that I have homework. Whenever I do any sort of meet and greet, there's always at least like two or three coded messages that are given to me. So it's so it's my homework for the night. It's great. This is awesome. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, we were going back, so that was Ellie. Let's go, I didn't get really an answer down here. I haven't called on either of you two. How about, how about you two tag team it? We'll start with you on the aisle and then we'll go on over. I forgot what it was because I got distracted by this thing. <laughs> 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 I just kind of forgot what the entire oh, sorry, story was. Then you can, you can yeah, yeah, yeah let's do that. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, do, would you, would you like that? Like, like, So the choice, they're always, the choices are to go down there. So it's never
never like someone pushing them down there. It's never someone, it's, it's a slow kind of like dejected walk down into the basement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the mom knows she's gonna get punished when she plays this game. The girl knows she's, you know, something's in there after, you know, what's his face has been sacrificed at the table. And, uh, <laughs> and so, and, and you can draw out that parallel too, you know, the upstairs, you know, kind of having that hope, that heaven, that escape from whatever's going down here and the out, outdoor either, you know, if this is, if that, that's hell, that's heaven, that's purgatory, that's, you know, the, you know, church militantism or, you know, fighting the good fight, keep going out there, so. Nice, so heaven, hell, kind of like back out into the real world? Yeah, makes sense. Totally. Three, three different levels. It, it tracks really cleanly. I love it. Yes, you in the front. Hi. Um, so obviously there's a laundry machine down there. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so my theory is that when you go down there, you're going deeper into the house and the foundations of the house. And theoretically, they could be discussing it as the house itself is hell. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I think it is. Great. So the, the, the entire house is? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Laundry uh, is La laundry is hell. <laughs> See, you understand. Yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that hard. Absolutely. Here, give it to that man in the dapper uh, red jacket right over there. I don't know. I don't know. It is. It, it's I've a, re it's a so really fine looking nice jacket, jacket there. Jacket, and it's all thanks to you. <laughs> uh, um, I would like to perhaps bring up the, the point that maybe it's not hell at all. Do these girls deserve to go to hell? After all they've been through, it doesn't seem like they did anything wrong in their lives. Um, I do believe the outside door is kind of the gateway to the outside world. Perhaps this entire house is purgatory. I had no idea what was going on with the old woman upstairs. So <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, stumped on that one. But perhaps also until, until the end when perhaps it's a portal to heaven, Maybe the basement um, kind of resembles this, just that something otherworldly mm -hmm. is happening here. And that is like kind of the destination um, for people to go to. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, right? And I do wonder if this is hell or if hell is represented in some way. Because one of the things, I've, I've read the play, I've seen it multiple times now, and, um, and every time it's incredible, but one of the things that I'm always struck by and, and watching it this time I was trying to pay attention for is at no point that I can really like put my finger on, you guys can call me out if this is a complete lie, um, do they actually lie? Like the ghost girls don't actually, like sometimes they obscure the truth, but they never outright lie, even in truth or hell, right? Or Show in hell. I'm like, that's not a pun. That's not a spooky pun. They gave me so many options up on stage, and I missed all of them, just shooting a miss. But at no point, right, are the, everything they say is like, oh, you lied, you lied, you lied, and it's always the truth. Even I'm scared of the dark. Um, and so it's one of those things where is that, are they lying about what's down in the basement? Is it hell? Is it not? I'm not sure. But I think to your point, do any of them deserve it? No, clearly not. And so you know, maybe that gives us a clue as to what the ancient one is versus what her parallel in the younger version of Squirrel is, which we should probably talk about here shortly. Um, so up here, yes. Great, so enthusiastic. Right, you, yes, hello. Anyway, so since the gray house, and if it symbolizes like the sense of purgatory, the door to the outside is the real world, while the door to the basement is moving off. So this is quite literally the midpoint. Because in order to pass through this in the real world, That's all. So yeah. So this is the this is the midpoint. This is like the way station, and this is passing on, which which brings up a question. And it seems like across everyone's everyone's thoughts here, everyone's interpretation of this, this door right here represents moving back into the real world, right? Like this is this is moving out of the house, right? Is Raleigh alive? Yeah. yeah? Yes. Yeah, so you all believe that she is a physical? Okay. Oh, let's see if we get some descent. Yeah. There we go. She is not, okay, so this, this is an interesting debate, right? And this is one I want to toss back there. Because we see that she has aged. She says that she's been here for about 35-ish years, I think it was something like that. And so, you know, we see that she ages through this, and she says she doesn't know what's on the other side of that door, and it scares her, right? That's kind of one of her final lines outside of the deer line is, I don't know, she tells the house, I don't know what I'm going into. I don't know where I'm going at this point. And so it's one of those things where, 
is she going back out into the real world? And after 35 years of being in this purgatory, is she reintroducing herself to the world? Or is this, again, like we were all saying, is this all a metaphor for passing on to another life or moving forward? And, you know, this is her kind of leaving her purgatory state. So I, I unfortunately, there are so many great questions, but we do have to wrap it up because... Already? I think we can do... Let's we, do... We can speed run it. How about how long would we give it, Rob? We're going to give it another 10 minutes. I do have somebody waiting, but please tell us your topic. Okay, 10 minutes. We're going to speed run. Okay. So, so, middle door, what do we think? We have, we have to do five. Okay. So, I was just going to say that I think the bottom door is a pathway to freedom. I think that every time someone goes down there, we don't really see what happens, but we know that things happen down there, and that's where a squirrel goes to be free or go to heaven or whatever it is. But we don't know what happens upstairs. We know what exists upstairs, but every time someone goes upstairs, we don't hear what happens, we don't see what happens, and the old woman goes upstairs, and I think that's where she goes to live, to exist, so that she can come back down when the next person comes and when the next man like needs to see his past or whatever. So I think the basement leads to uh, freedom and people just live upstairs. That's where they go to sort of be in purgatory when they're not in the main space. Yep, absolutely. Uh, mid, here's a good one to speed run this. One, one, one. How's that? Good? Yes? Great. Yes. I, I think it has to do with acceptance. Okay. Um, once you step into the house, you become part of this ambiance and this atmosphere. At first, Max didn't want to accept that she was, you know, in the house, so she didn't want to go upstairs. Upstairs represents kind of the acceptance of the situation that you're in. Um, uh, about downstairs, I think that has more to do with the intention of what you're stepping down. The mom goes downstairs, but she comes back up because her intention is to stay here, to keep taking care of these girls. Um, when, um, oh my God, when the three girls go downstairs, they actually don't come back up from the stairs. They come down from up top because Ooh, their intention yeah. is still to be in this house. So I think that whether that's the portal to hell is a really is what it is. It's what about what the girls are intending it to be. So once, um, oh my God, once Squirrel passes on, she passes into a bright white light instead of like this dim kind of blinking mm -hmm. regular light as you're going down the stairs. So yep. now she's, upset. she's, you know, she's fulfilled her, I guess, traumatic release. She's fulfilled, you know, her intentions here in this plane, whether purgatory or not. And so now she's stepping into the basement with the intention of leaving. Because at the beginning, she starts by going downstairs with a bunch of tools, trying to, I guess, trying to pr push her way through, right. and isn't able to do that until she fulfills her intention in, you know, in the house. Nice. nice, awesome. I love that. So it's different, different layers of intention, and you know, living, accepting, and deciding to to commit. Yes, uh, you in the amazing uh, game theory jacket. Not that I'm biased or anything. Uh, <laughs> So just a real, man, that clickbait green is hard to miss from all the way down here. <laughs> yes? I think that for the ghosts, um, the first, like, outside door is where they, like, begin their journey of being ghosts in purgatory, mm -hmm. and the upstairs is kind of like the white space in a glory. <laughs> Ooh, yes. you pulling out the video game references of glory. Yes. Nice, that's the white space. Uh -huh. Sure. So this is, uh, again, kind of agreeing with down here where it's uh, the, the downstairs is acceptance. That's awesome. And then upstairs is kind of this like nebulous area. Um, okay. Since we only have 10 minutes, I think we got to hop into some of the, oh, I'm I'm they're so really sorry. excited about I've this I've been one. holding okay, yes. this for like, Vibrating. I'm very excited. Okay. I, um, I don't want, I don't want to disrespect the vibrations down here. So yes, <laughs> you, you the, vibe away. The theater and YouTube and nerd all over in me is very excited. Um, I've been staring at this hole in the ceiling since I came in and since like, this scrim opened because I kind of feel like this is like a waypoint judgment zone. Like, you know, in the first episode of Next Gen and Q has them in that fun little room, yeah. that's here. Yes. And so people come in and they are judged and they have their judgment mm -hmm. and then they leave. Yep. And others are kind of called in to help make that happen. Yeah. And I'm just, again, this hole in the ceiling, like 
I feel like this place is ancient. Yep. And people come in, they are judged, and they leave. Mm -hmm. And so it's creepy and falling apart. Speaking of ancient things, hey, everyone's favorite topic to discuss outside that I have heard like no one settle on an answer around is like, hey, creepy refrigerator woman. Uh, like, <laughs> best moment of ever. Like, it does, it's amazing. It's great. It's the best jump scare ever. Eat your heart out, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, <laughs> You knew I had to mention it once. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, the, the question here is, right, I think one of the things that as I've seen it, I saw it in previews and I've seen these, the, the performances now, one of the things that the director and the, the crew has tried to make clear is that the old woman, the, the ancient one, as she's listed in the program, is the same as Squirrel. Right, and I think you can kind of rec you know, they they reblocked that scene so that way Squirrel is on the next scene. You see Squirrel in; she's on top of the refrigerator. This and that. Why though? <laughs> Lol. What? <laughs> what? What does that mean? Uh, I'm curious. Uh, purple guy, not purple guy. <laughs> but like, I, I, I just see. I just see. The, it's a very distinct shade of purple. Yes. Hello again. Hello again. For a while that they make a very clear um, obviously they link squirrel and the ancient one and they also make a very very clear allusion to hell whether or not the portal is legitimate mm -hmm. a clear allusion to hell in the basement i think by splitting the two they're almost separating the innocence and maturity mm. and having this mature version of the squirrel that has seen this vengeance and gained what she wanted in this purgatory be able to leave while this vengeful youthful um, immature version of Squirrel finally is also released. And it's sort of splitting them. One goes to heaven, one goes to hell as they're leaving the resort. Th yeah. that's, that's beautiful. So there's two versions of her and one is kind of like, yeah, released or let go as part of this acceptance or as part of this moving on process. That's oh, Matt, I just want to take one more from over here and I'm so sorry, everybody. This has been amazing, but our 10 minutes has... It's expiring a little bit, but I want to get one more last question in, if that's okay. There, there is supposed Barry? to be a conversation. That someone told me that there's a conversation afterward where you can continue amongst yourselves that's at so the Marion Cafe. Anyone who knows this? No one knows. Literally no one. It's <laughs> great. Marion Cafe? Does anyone know New York? <laughs> no. um, um, I believe it's called the Marion Hotel. Marion Hotel? I believe that See, you don't... You don't even have to walk a block, friends. It's you can just walk past Perfect Pint and walk past Connolly's, and it's a smaller, sort of intimate setting, and we'd love to, you can keep on talking and uh, buy some drinks, and they're gonna love having you. So, do you mind one last Yo, one? No, no, 100%, 100%, I just wanna make sure. This side of the block. This, this side, side of the, of the block. block. So literally, you just go out, take a left, and it's like right there, and okay. you can continue discussing, theorizing to your heart's content. Is this yeah. one, one last theory? One last theory, yes. Hello. Uh, for the last theory, I wanted to sort of turn things over because the entire time I kept hearing people talk about heaven and hell, and I don't believe there is any sort of symbol symbolism for that. It feels like this is it. I believe the basement and the upstairs lead to the exact same place. There is absolutely no difference. It's all just the same, as shown by the person that crawled off the refrigerator. It's all just repeating itself, and once you die, that's it, you were left with your life and your mistakes and there is nothing more to it. There is no heaven, there is no hell. Uh, you've lived what you had and you are doomed to repeat it forever as again, also showcased by how the actresses kept finishing other people's sentences. They've lived through this thousands of times and they know it and they no longer sort of are surprised by anything because there's nothing more here. This is it. The gray house is all there is. That, that is all there is. That is that is the be all end all. That's a great wait, great one. Okay, so with that, my friends, we have to bring our uh, we have to bring this to a close. Unfortunately, this is the reason why we, these discussions have lasted forever. Uh, if you could do me one quick favor, though, I, I think I'm, I think you're all familiar with a phrase, or at least a lot of you are familiar with a particular phrase that I use a lot. Uh, and I see YouTubers do this all the time, where it's like, I'm gonna do this in front of everyone. Will, will you, can I film you guys saying that with me? Can I do that? Awesome. Okay, here we go. On, on three, ready? One, two, three. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs>